We got the commie scare. We put our billions of dollars in massive redundant weapon systems vis-a-vis -vis the Soviet Union. That's where a lot of our money went to. And of course, there is no end to how many submarines and bombers. You ask these manufacturers like Lockheed Martin, how many F-35s? They never tell you how many, because it's, enough is never enough. How many nuclear subs? Do you know how much uh, explosive power a Trident nuclear submarine has? With multiple nuclear warheads? This is just one sub. Let's say it unloaded. How many cities do you think it could destroy in an hour around the world? Anybody want to start? Huh? 10? 200. One sub. How many do you need? But it's big business. It's profit. It's what President Eisenhower condemned in his farewell speech, which you can see on the internet in January 1961, when he warned us about the military industrial complex not only squeezing our freedom, but damaging our economy. For all this weaponry, we don't build the schools we need, the clinics we need, the libraries we want to maintain, the public transit, the up-to-date sewage and water systems. And so, Look at the expectation level in Western Europe, even in Canada. They have full Medicare for all, free choice of doctor and hospital. I have a lot of cousins up there, so I know the, I know the land up there. And they do it on half of the price. That is, they, they pay $4,500 per capita, covering everybody. We're up to $9,500 per capita, and we don't cover tens of millions of people, even under Obamacare or they're undercovered. What's our excuse? Our excuse is that we go through schools learning corporate propaganda, learning about free markets, which, which don't exist, because corporate welfare destroys free market. Bailouts, handouts, subsidies, giveaways. You can't have free markets when big business, when they get in trouble, they're supposed to go bankrupt and obey the market. No, they go to Washington for a bailout, like Wall Street. We grow up believing that it's all up to us, we gotta sink or swim, and our income comes from salary and wages. It doesn't come from public services sufficiently. We don't demand paid maternity leave, paid sick leave, so on. You have people working for federal agencies in Washington, no paid maternity leave. They have to pay $15,000 to take care of the infant a year. That's the federal government. So you have to raise expectation levels. Facts are a good way to raise expectation levels. Now, I spoke over a year ago at Harvard Law School. The first thing I said to these ex-valedictorians <laughs> was that they were factually unprepared for law school. And I said, you want to test me? Tell me six corporate crimes. Corporate crimes are reported, even in the Wall Street Journal. They, they have no clue how corporations control us, how they strategically plan our tax system. They plan our commercializing childhood. They plan our elections, our government, our foreign and military policy. They're planning our genetic inheritance, Monsanto, patenting gene sequences, for example. They've been planning the kind of food that our children eat to get fat and be predisposed to diabetes and high blood pressure, junk food, junk drink. They're planning how much they're gonna dump in our environment in terms of toxics. They're planning and planning and planning. That's what they do for a living. That's in their DEA, DNA. So if they're planning our future, they don't want to privatize our public schools. When are we going to plan our own future? I'm not talking about small business here. I'm talking about the big global corporations who have no allegiance to country or community other than control them 
or abandon them to dictators abroad who hire workers at 80 cents an hour with modern capital equipment. So <clears throat> let's excuse me to have a little test here. Let's have a little fun. If someone said to you, write down everything you own, and I, you got 15 minutes, and I say, okay, you play along with the game. You start writing, I own clothes, own a car, own books, own a computer, MP player, you know, furniture, whatever. And the person says, keep going, keep going, and you're down to paper clips, right? And you can't think of anything more. You say, oh yeah, I have a savings account. Okay, good, put that down. How long would it be before you put down, I'm part owner of one third of America, which is public lands. I'm part owner of the public airwaves, which the people own and the broadcast companies control free of charge, compliments of an indentured Congress. And they decide who says what 24 hours a day and who doesn't say what 24 hours a day. And they're using our property. We're the landlords, they're the tenant, they pay us no rent and they shut us out with the kind of nonsense and fluff and disgusting low-grade entertainment that they fill the airwaves with. Have you ever watched Saturday afternoon NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox? Hold on to your stomach. <laughs> it's grade B movie reruns. It's competition, people flipping over in bicycles and pits. It's infomercials. And I, I watch it. Once in a while, I turn it on and see what they're doing with our property. And I end up saying with the same conclusion. I say, is that all that's going on in America? Is the only thing going on on television, on universities and colleges, sports? Is that what people go to school for, sports? In Western Europe, they have sport leagues. They don't have University of Heidelberg football team or soccer team. They're separate. And I'm saying to myself, hey, this is our property. Do you ever study the commons? The commons are like the public lands, the public airways. When you see these CEOs talking about, bragging about Silicon Valley and all the wonderful things they've done, you know what they don't tell you? They wouldn't even be there without the US taxpayer and research and development from NASA and the Department of Defense, and the National Institutes of Health, and the Department of Agriculture that did the basic research that created the internet, and that still creates the kind of technology that they then apply and market. But they don't tell you, do they? That without you, the taxpayer, you wouldn't recognize the aerospace industry, the semiconductor industry, the biotech industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the nanotechnology industry, the containerization industry. That came from US Naval research. One day I said, I sent a letter to major CEOs and I said, why don't you have a taxpayer appreciation day? We say, thank you, US taxpayer, on April 15th. That's a good day. <laughs> <coughs> They, they, they weren't amused. And you have all these stadiums built with tax money, all these ballparks, right? They never named them Taxpayer Stadium, <laughs> Taxpayer Ballpark. No, they named them, you know, Wells Fargo Stadium or some other corporate crook <laughs> because they pay for the naming rights. But the naming rights are nothing compared to how much the taxpayer paid to build the stadiums. And unlike the Roman Colosseum, where they let in the people free at least, they charge you through the nose for these. <laughs> what a Frankfurter cost, parking, tickets. You see, this is all because we have low expectation levels. It's back to Eugene Debs. So, first recognition, we don't grow up civic. We don't learn civic skills in school. We don't have civic experience connecting 
school with community. There are always exceptions, to be sure, and they basically show how important it is, how the students love it and the teachers love it. When they connect like that, when fifth grader came to his, a school in Utah back 20-some years ago, she was very excited. She walked in the class and said, I've just discovered a waste dump. The teacher and students said, what? Where? She said, just four blocks away. And they said, it's impossible. We walked by there. <clears throat> she said, you wait and see. And so they went down, and it was a waste dump covered with shrubbery. And so the teacher was so impressed by the students that she starts a little class. And to make a long story short, they got it cleaned up. The mayor cleaned it up. They became little celebrities. They actually were asked to testify on the Superfund. Fifth graders. So the teacher gets more excited. She writes a book called Kids in Social Action. And that's what she does now. She goes around the country trying to get schools and communities to connect on real issues. Now, would it surprise you to ask you the following question? When I say the following words, think what image comes to your mind. Here we go, very quick. Crime, violence, regulation, welfare, crime, violence, regulation, welfare. Street crime, burglaries, assault, rapes, government regulation, and welfare handed out to poor people. All accurate. But quantitatively, far less than corporate violence, corporate crime, corporate welfare with your taxes, and corporate regulation of your lives. How come? And by the way, anybody who you hear makes a factual assertion, always ask what their source is. When anybody in government says, oh, they're going to send drones here, or they're going to send money there, ask them what the legal authority is under federal law or our Constitution. If reporters just to ask, what's the evidence, and where's your legal authority in Washington, we might have a better government. Okay, so corporate crime. All you got to do is subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. It's crime against consumers like Wells Fargo, you know, you know that story. The whole mortgage racket in 2007, 2008, where they had robo-signatures and all kinds of deceptive practices. You have corporate crime against workers, occupational diseases, for example, uh, not paying on time. Uh, or not paying what they should be uh, paying. You have crime against pensions, looting them in terms of speculation on Wall Street. Uh, corporate crime is everywhere, and you can just look it up on the internet. Corporate violence, okay, about 14,000 homicides a year in the U.S. Now make the following comparison. And the issue is preventive, preventiveness. Because some crimes are deliberate, some crimes are negligent, some crimes are for profit, some crimes are, are, have different motivations. But let's have the yardstick be, we would like to prevent a wall. All right, the violence. Ready. How many were killed on September 11th, 2001? Anybody know? Remember? That's right, just under 3,000. Okay, that's once, fortunately, just once. Okay. According to OSHA, 1,100 die every week in this country from workplace-related diseases and traumas, like collapse of construction sites, etc. 1,100. According to the EPA, over 1,200 people die from air pollution diseases every week. By the way, 1.1 million die from air pollution in India alone a year. Okay, let's try this one. 800 people 
a week die in this country because they can't afford health insurance to get diagnosed and treated in time. It's 800 a week. Try this one. 5,000 people in this country die every week in hospitals due to hospital malpractice, hospital mishaps, hospital-induced infection, and misprescribing of pharmaceuticals. 5,000 a week, quarter of a million a year. Source, Johns Hopkins University Medical School, March 2016, peer-reviewed study. That was the rock-bottom estimate. They think it's higher. And it doesn't include clinics, just hospitals. Are you getting the idea that styles of violence are prosecuted based on the power of the perpetrator? The more powerful the perpetrators, the more they get off. The less popular the perpetrators, the more they get the hammer blow of the police. Quarter of a million people a year? It isn't even an item in the election? Quarter of a million people a year? Preventable? It isn't even discussed in the press, the one day story when it came out? Quarter of a million people subjected to the silent, silent cumulative form of violence? And it doesn't even get us angry compared to somebody who's assaulted in the back alley? One person? Too many? That's how we grow up corporate. How about preventable deaths and auto crashes? When I started going after GM and the auto companies because I'd lost a lot of classmates in high school and college to crashes and I learned that they could have been saved by seat belts, airbags, padded dash panels, stronger door latches, etc., better brakes, better tires. <clears throat> Five times the number of people your age were being killed in per hundred million vehicle miles. So one-fifth of the fatality now. That's how improved motor vehicles are, highways, etc. But there's still people killed, ignition switch defect of GM covered up for years. Still people killed or sickened by Toyota sudden acceleration or not nitrogen oxides release, especially here in California due to the cheating on the software by VW, deliberate premeditated crime. All these are recent. 